Every time I scrub him for surgery, I'm asking someone to give me their complete and utter trust, to have faith in my abilities, and to know that I'll do everything in my power to make them better. It's really unlike anything else I do. The only thing that matters when I'm in there is the patient. Doesn't matter what else was on my mind before I stepped foot into the OR, all that disappears, it just fades away. And I'm focused on doing the best job possible for my patient. As I operate, I lose track of time. After hours of intense focus, nothing beats the feeling of knowing that I've made a difference in someone's life. Amazingly, that feeling doesn't change because every patient's surgery is different and there are always unique considerations. I think about what's important to each patient, what they've had to give up because of their pain, and then I work hard to give them their life back. So when I got my x-ray, I was able to sit up off the x-ray table and look over at the screen and across the room I could see what was going on in my hips. I have a cam type impingement and that means there's extra bone on the femur and this is a lot of extra bone. As a surgeon, I've treated you know, countless patients who have had my exact diagnosis and it's never felt so personal before. When I counsel patients on what they can expect with treatment, with surgery. I'm telling them things that I've learned in my training or things I've read in books um, and through secondhand experience with patients being my teachers. But I've never actually experienced it for myself. This is going to be a transformative or a life-changing experience um, to be able to tell patients this is exactly what it's going to feel like. So it's the night before the surgery. We got into Denver earlier today and it was really nice to kind of check out my old stomping grounds when I was in fellowship here. We kind of spent some time in uh, Boulder, uh, went back to Mount Sanitas. I, when I was a fellow here I used to hike Mount Sanitas three, four times a week and it was really, really cool to do it one more time before surgery because it really helped me connect with all the reasons I was doing this. I think it's going to be really interesting for me to be able to give a first-hand account to patients as far as what it feels like, how to recover from it, and then really apply my knowledge of the anatomy and everything that I know about you know, what type of pain is bad, what type of pain is good, what you can work through, what you can't, and seeing firsthand whether it applies to me too. I think that's going to be a, an immense growing experience for me and is probably going to transform kind of how I approach um, treating patients and counseling patients. I would be concerned a little bit about stability. So let's say that you have a flap of five, six, seven millimeters. Mm -hmm. I can just trim the edge of it and then not go all the way down just to make sure it would not keep on flapping. Mm -hmm. And obviously after we take away the offending mechanism in the camp, then it wouldn't bother you anymore. Mm -hmm. And then do some microfracture on top of it and then it would just glue in got to meet with Omer, and it was great seeing him. I hadn't seen him for, for a while, but he examined my hips. We reviewed my imaging studies together, and it was really cool how he included me in his operative plan. So we kind of discussed different scenarios of what he might find and what he wanted me to do if he encountered unexpected things. And it was really nice to have a collaborative approach to that. Um, but that's very much like Omer. You know, I've, I've worked with him in the OR as a fellow. I've uh, worked uh, alongside him and he is just a, a master at his trade. It's, it's like watching an artist um, sculpt. Um, he's so talented, he's so gifted, and he's so intelligent that uh, you know I, he didn't have to have that discussion with me to get my input. That was just him being him.
a much more than what I thought. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Way more than what I thought. Day one after surgery, I really haven't had much pain. I wouldn't even call it pain. It's been like a zero to a one out of 10, more of like just a little bit of an achiness. Um, but it is, it is a little different being in this vulnerable state. If someone were to run after me right now, I couldn't run away from my life. And it's, it's interesting realizing that you are vulnerable and you're depending on other people. Um, but you have to try not to fight it and just accept it as a part of the healing process. When I woke up in recovery, Omer came by and showed me what he had found in the joint and he was very surprised by the extent of the damage because neither one of us expected it to be that bad. And both hips had significant cartilage damage to the point that it was really pushing the indications of doing both hips at the same time. I, I was able to watch the surgical videos from beginning to end and um, Omer did a fantastic job. I'm really happy with the, with the progress so far and I'm looking forward to getting back. Um, yeah, I can't believe it's actually been 10 months since I had the surgery. I was definitely surprised to see how much damage I had in my hips and that kind of gave me a little bit of a shock. I thought I was going to you know, uh, get the surgery done, get back to life and uh, you know, do everything that I wanted to do, but it gave me pause and I really had to evaluate what was most important to me because if there was something that I was doing that was running the risk of causing further damage, I wanted to save myself from needing anything in the future like a hip replacement. The, the reason I, I wanted to document this whole journey was because I thought it'd be interesting to go from being a surgeon who treats this very problem to being a patient who has it and to see how it would impact how I practice and how I approach treating this, this problem. I think anytime a doctor has an opportunity to experience firsthand what the patients experience, it makes them a better doctor. And I think that's been the case for me. I think I've, I've learned to be more compassionate, to be a more understanding and to really know what my patients are describing, what they're feeling. The most important thing I learned in this journey is to be patient and to give the body a chance to heal. I was really expecting to be at 100% by three, four months, and I've been seeing improvements at the six month mark, at the eight month mark, and even today at 10 months, every few weeks that passes, something is easier to do. Something, and my endurance improves. I can you know, sit for longer. I can go on a road trip and my hip doesn't bother me. Um, and it's, it's really encouraging, but it's changed the way I practice and how I counsel patients who might be having you know, some lingering issues at the six month time point. That's not the end of the world and it's not alarming. You, you can expect improvements even beyond that. And until I felt it firsthand, it was really hard to buy into, but you know, the body responds and heals at its own rate and you just have to respect that. Doing the surgery has definitely lifted a load off of my shoulders with, from a psychological standpoint because if I want to do something that's going to really stress my hips, I don't have to worry about the fact that I'm causing more damage. Like I'm 100% glad that I did this. There's no doubt in my mind that I would have been worse off now if I hadn't done this and I would have been worse off in 5 or 10 years. And I'm so thrilled at where I am right now and I'm, I'm looking forward to what life has in store without worrying about my hips, and that's priceless.